live. Let's see. Yeah, we're live. All right, here we are. Hello, hello. Hello. Ashley, since you do such a great job, why don't you lead us off? All righty. Well, hello, Dripping Springs. Ashley Tellis and Chris Peshek. Um, It is Monday. It is two o'clock. So we are live with you guys to talk about everything going on in our community that we've come across in the past week that we know of up ahead. And um, yeah, that's what we're going to do for, for a little bit. If you have questions, as always, hit us up with those. If you're curious, you know what's going on here, there, everywhere. Hit us up with that and we'll find out for you or we'll already have the answer. Um, we are both real estate agents, but community enthusiasts at heart. And that is where this little live stream kind of was born and bred. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm still trying to figure out how to share this thing as we go. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, Ashley just nailed it. This is the weekly drip, which is what we've uh, come to start calling it now. I, you came up with that name, didn't you? I did. I like it. I think you said that you had you had been thinking about using it in some other way, but it just kind of made sense. So yep. here we are. And again, to echo on what Ashley said, as we're going through, if you've got questions or comments or if we're wrong about something and we need to be corrected, uh, type it in. Uh, we can see it on our page. So uh, this is this is as live and interactive as it gets right now for us. So here we go. Done. Um, all right. So we were just talking a little bit about Ashley's day. I thought she had a beer, but it is not a beer. It is <laughs> not, just... a, not a beer. Uh, some highly caffeinated tea. <laughs> I saw the color and I thought it was a Shiner box. So, uh, you know, if you're familiar with beer, you understand the gold and, and red color. Um, but she was just saying that she has had a heck of a day because uh, she is a entrepreneur slash teacher right now? Well, I never claim to be an educator. Like, let's put air quotes around that, okay? Okay. okay. Um, That's so, fair. Yes, my profession, my trade is real estate agent extraordinaire, but I'm a terrible teacher and <laughs> um, even more terrible micromanager and, uh, you know, I, I have to be sharing the same feelings as thousands of parents in our district right now. Um, this is for the birds. Virtual sucks. There's no other way to put it. I'm not a nice person. I'm not happy with this. But dadgummit, I want my son to succeed. So I'm going to do it. Have you been getting Wyatt to his classes on time? <laughs> yes. Yes, I have. <laughs> so... So for those that don't know, I have a fourth grader at Dripping Springs Elementary. Um, I, I moved here so he could go to school. And we moved here right before he started kindergarten. And my intention is for him to start and finish in the same district. I mean, it was not by accident that we ended up in the school system. We sought it out. Um, so I, I, I think you're alone in that, by the way. No, no, <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> I, I mean, we just have some amazing educators and we have an amazing district. It is just a really weird time in the world right now. And I know we're all doing the best that we can. So I want to recognize that. But today's biggest challenge has been, you know, we as moms, a lot of us are like, well, what can we do to help our child succeed? Well, obviously, they need the Pinterest worthy little school setup with the desk and all the flashy school supplies, Crayola brand. Ticondra, whatever it's called, those pencils that don't break, you know, we, we get him the goods, right? And man, he's ready and everything smells like new and fresh and we're, we're ready to go. We're ready to learn. Um, I'm not even on my computer anymore. He has my computer now. I had to go borrow a device for this because he's going to have the best of the best. And where do I fight him all day? That boy is up in his bed trying to virtually learn. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> man. Go ahead. And, and, and part of me is laughing right now. Um, right before, just I, I was working on my computer, and in the background, I had a, um, I had a Facebook Live going. It was uh, an AM and football interview with some of the players. And just kind of going, and, and I'm listening, half not listening. And I'd switched over to Facebook to make sure that this broadcast was set up. And one of the report, everything is set up via Zoom. Okay, the players are in their normal uh, interview area, but all the uh, all the sportscasters or sports writers are calling in via Zoom. 
And I just looked up for some reason as a sportscaster, and I'm not going to say who it was, but he used to be in Austin, and anybody that follows A&M Athletics knows who he is. Um, he's laying in his bed. He's got pillows behind him. And I'm just – I'm kind of <laughs> – <laughs> I'm like, dude, do, do you not understand? Um, I mean, you, you can you can do a green screen. You can throw it on Zoom. You can put that that uh, picture behind you. But yeah, he just laid up in bed. You know, that's, I, I don't know if he ever got out today. It, it was it was pretty funny. So yeah, I, I mean, I guess a lot of people are, are doing what Wyatt's doing right now and just, you know. I don't know. I just I just feel like we took phoning it into a next level here. Like I'm not even requiring pants. Like keep your pajama <laughs> bottoms on and put on a shirt. Like I don't care. That's fine. But good gravy, get out of the bed, boy. Like we're not Grandpa Joe at Willy Wonka pretending we're disabled here. Like let's go make an effort. <laughs> oh my god. So, so what you're saying is that the the Tullis household does have a, a dress code. We do. Okay. We do. You need to wear it. You're not going to poo bear it around here. You're going to put on pants. <sighs> and I know I'm not alone. And like, you know, we're happy. We're healthy. Um, yeah. My husband and I are both still employed. Right. Um, you know, we can buy groceries. Like there's so much praise and God's provision for our family right now. Um, I'm just not cut out for being an educator. And um, and I'm not even teaching them. I'm just trying to keep keep them on track. And I have right. a whole new respect, um, especially for our elementary oh. little cat herders. Good gravy. No, no, no. My my sister in law is an elementary school teacher, and and my nieces as well. Nope. I can teach the high schoolers barely. No, the the elementary kids different animal, different <laughs> animal completely. God bless them. Yes, yes. Um, my my brother is a former educator on the high school level, and then my um, sister in law, his wife, she still teaches um, on the middle school level. She's a science teacher, and um, you know, it's just different types of hard, I think. Yeah. And different challenges, just like all of us face different challenges in our own careers. Um, but it's it's a good dose of like, oh yeah, we really need these people. <laughs> We really need these people. Um, but um, on that note, there's actually some things happening tonight. Um, so if you have kiddos in the district, um, you can go online, look up Dripping Springs Independent School District, and there's going to be a live stream of the um, board meeting. If I understand correctly, they are talking about extending virtual learning uh, past September 14th, but there's a big camp of folks that say, no, we want in person. Um, sharing a little bit about my family, um, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and make my political stance because I've been asked this a few times and I feel like this is an appropriate place for it. As much as I'm like complaining and moaning, like this is terrible, I hate it, I hate it. Um, my son is compromised, so he won't be going back. We're gonna stay home as long as possible and I'm gonna just like muscle through. Um, but I am in support of if everyone feels comfortable, if our educators feel comfortable, if our parents feel comfortable, like let's open it back up instead of delaying the inevitable. Um, so that's where I stand on that, if anybody was wondering, a couple of folks have asked. But tonight you can tune in to that school board meeting. Um, I don't know if it's too late today to get your public comment in. Uh, maybe, maybe not. I thought it was. I thought I saw something that comments were shut off sometime around noon today. I could be I wrong. I think so. That. Yeah, I think so. Um, and that's just kind of good information to know. And I really appreciate that they allow the public comment and that those oh, yeah. are read at the very start of each and every board meeting. And that really gives a good baseline of like what's going on in the community as well. Um, and God bless those volunteers. Like they're making really big decisions and they already make really big decisions. This is just a whole new level. Yeah, it's a different, again, it's just a different animal. And that's, uh, we, we talked about it last week. And that's one of the reasons I'm wearing this shirt, which is a Camp Gladiator shirt um, that I finally got to wear. I, I stole it back from my wife. Um, <laughs> Pete, and we talked about it last week is, in, in unprecedented times, have a little bit of grace, especially when you're dealing with people that are that are volunteering to do a job. And I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the school board members wanted to do it. They ran for it. They, you know, they, they put themselves out there for it. But my God, 
I, I've seen I've seen some of the stuff going on on social media, and I wow, people, <laughs> take it take a big old deep breath, and um, and trust me, no nobody is trying to uh, no nobody's trying to do anybody wrong. They're trying to do the best things that they know how to do, and given the circumstances and the knowledge, and you know politically whatever it doesn't matter they're trying to do what they think is best so just take a breath um, yeah unfortunately um it doesn't matter the scenario uh the best efforts fly in the face of public opinion on some level um but this is me speaking um as a daughter to a, a dad who was on the school board for most of my school life until i was 12 13 and then he was elected county commissioner and you can't serve on two different bodies that set tax rates. So that's when he stepped away from the school board and watching him serve that community, not that long ago, cause I'm so young, um, <laughs> really right. set the stage for like, man, I have a heart to volunteer and to give back, but my gosh, I just can't imagine the scrutiny that those volunteers are feeling every single day like i bet going to heb is really tough for them right now yeah. i'm gonna say it and then it's really hard i yep i would agree hmm. Hmm. okay <laughs> maybe in november so, we'll talk real politics <laughs> oh yeah that's exactly what we're gonna do <laughs> kidding i'm kidding big no <laughs> This is a positivity show, not. That's not right. That's show. right. We're, we're we're just letting people know what's going on, and the whole point is the school board meeting tonight is going to be streamed. So if you're interested in it, if you want to know what they're thinking, how they're thinking, get on the face. It's on Facebook Live, correct? Um, no, there's a link uh, that'll take you over to YouTube, and it's oh, live streamed okay. on YouTube's platform. Um, but it it is possible it's shared around Facebook, so it might yeah. pop up. But I just go look up the district page on Facebook and then click that link Absolutely. over and um, try to tune in. But man, it's also like, take a snack because these meetings are lasting six and seven hours. Oh, the last one ended like three in the morning. I'm not surprised. Oh my gosh. Not surprised. And again, a volunteer's heart. Good Lord. Yeah. Denise, <laughs> Denise is helping us out here. Let's see what Denise has to say. Uh, oh, thank oh, she you. Gave us the thank link. you, friend. Thanks, Denise. Appreciate it. She's taking care of us like she always does. I know. Um, so, yeah. Oh, and Denise is, Denise, is that your daughter that started her first teaching job today? I think I saw that. There, there definitely was a first day of school picture. I believe she's a third grade instructor, but Denise, right. forgive me. I don't recall what district that was in. Um, guys, I think I've like Chris is like my brother in real estate. Denise is like my mama in real estate. She's going to get me all the information. She's going to take good care of me. Um, Denise works over at Corridor Title, and that's where all of my business goes to if I can have it my way because Corridor takes such good care of me. So I'm not even surprised that Denise is like, here's the resource you need. Yeah, she's my on mama. <laughs> I, I just want to let everybody know that Denise is more like my sister, not my mama. <laughs> She just can't take such good care of me. <laughs> I, I'm just laughing about the last conversation that we had with her. Um, that was, yeah. No, Denise is like a sister. <laughs> I've got two sisters, one older, one younger. I'm, I'm in the middle. Oh, you, yeah. um, you have several siblings, don't you? Well, yeah, I met my real estate family. Oh, oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> I was so like, you're you're on, my little you. sister. Denise is my, my barely older sister. And, uh, <laughs> And her daughter is student teaching in Abilene. There you go. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's awesome. Man, I look forward to that day um, whenever I reflect on whatever my son grows up to be and like that pride of all that teaching I did in the fourth grade really paid off because by gosh, <laughs> he's a successful member of society now. I've That's done right. it. And he puts on pants. Yeah, he puts on pants. <laughs> <laughs> We love you too, Denise, Thanks, very Denise much. Too. Yeah, very, very much. Um, yeah. A few more uh, kid updates, things going yeah. around in the drip. Uh, this weekend is assessments for fall ball, at least for oh. 10 and under. Um, I'm assuming that's like across the board for all ages. Um, we're looking at into getting back into baseball. 
Very excited for that. Um, if you have an interest in Cub Scouts, PAC 101 will be reconvening in person in October. Um, I'm the committee chair for PAC 101, so if you have Cub Scout questions in the area, hit me up. I will answer them, but things look a little wonky right now, just like they do everywhere else. If, you, if you've got questions about kids' stuff in DRIP in general, yes. Yeah. So call yeah. Ashley or message on here or whatever. She's, she's on top of it. Why it's very involved. He is. He is. But he's an only <laughs> child, so I need him to be. Otherwise, he won't have social skills. There you go. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Um, so I, I posted a, something this morning. I don't know if you saw it or not, but you, you should be excited about it. Uh, they scheduled Christmas on Mercer. Hopefully, that will, will be the result. And I always say of going back to normal normal because I refuse to think about things as new normal. It's just normal normal. Um, so hopefully things will go back to normal, normal. Christmas on Mercer will be maybe the first big thing that's normal, normal again. I got to break your heart, friend. No, no it isn't. No, come on. No, it isn't. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but it's not. Um, so as a lot of folks that have interacted with me know, you can see me at Christmas on Mercer um, for the community. I provide the free photos with Santa. And then you get a letter from Santa out to your kiddo after that event. Um, I got a call two weeks ago that I'm not allowed to bring Santa in for pictures in person. So we're having to pivot. There is a virtual plan in place, but it's not going to look like it did in years no. past. And it just sucks. Can, can we get a Santa outfit, stuff it, and put a mannequin head in it? <laughs> Would that work? Here's the problem. Like we even thought about putting Santa in plexiglass, but I felt like that was a little too jailhouse. Um, <laughs> and a lector. Right? Um, the, the problem is, um, you know, you want the kiddos to like interact, right? So if my kiddo comes and does a photo and then the kiddo behind me comes and does a photo, well, what if my kiddo was sick and asymptomatic and didn't know it? And for uh, germs. So, you know, when I when I'm shaking my head, it's not going to be the same. I just know that component is definitely going to be different. Um, but I think 2021 is going to be pretty amazing. I agree. It's got like, bigger, better than ever, because we've just been like sitting on all these ideas and we have so much more time to execute for it. Um, Stoked that the Lions Club is still in conjunction with the city making something happen for Christmas on Mercer. You know, like the Singer yeah. Songwriter Festival is canceled. That's just flat canceled. Um, so there's going to be something. It's going to look different, but I still think it'll be a great opportunity to support local, shop local, um, and do those same type of things. Yeah, and I, um, that's a good point. One of the I know one of the major things for Christmas are the reason for Christmas on Mercer is all of the shops down there, and that's kind of what it was started for, right? Yes. So actually, and and the way I understand it, a lot of their business is done really between November first and, and January first, kind of that two month period. So mm -hmm. having a little bit of normalcy down there is definitely important. Um, and that reminds me, I've actually, I don't have an announcement I can make right now, but hopefully in the near future, there's going to be a pretty big announcement uh, for some something new going in down on Mercer. Uh, that's that's pretty cool. So anyway, Mercer is going to expand a little bit. We can say that. So um, I believe in the industry, they call that vague book that yes. you just did. <laughs> I don't know what industry you're talking about, but, um, you know. <laughs> yes, Shelly, we know you want Santa. I we know, get me it. too. We get it. That's a bummer. Um, yeah, and it that got me thinking. Sorry, the reason I brought that up, that got me thinking, is uh, some of the bond elections that are coming up. I don't know if you saw with the parks bonds. Um, there's a couple of big ones for Dripping Springs on the parks bond election. Uh, one is the skate park. I think they've shifted a little bit and they're trying to generate that money through a, uh, I think it's a county grant and also another county grant for some of the funds for the, um, the old Fitzhugh street. Mm -hmm. So they can finally get construction going on that. That's going to be on the bond. Um, and then, oh, look, yeah, Shelly loves you too. <laughs> Everybody loves Ashley. What the heck? We love you too, dude. <laughs> 
Anyway, love you too, Shelly. Thanks. Uh, so yeah, anyway, the, the next. She already said she happened. liked your shirt. She did. She said she liked my shirt, but only because it's Camp Gladiator. And if you didn't know, Shelly is the uh, de facto Camp Gladiator mayor of Dripping Springs. Yes, so, she is. Yeah. She's kind of a big deal. And just knowing her, it, it, it's kind of it's kind of a big deal. But uh, anyway, the, the election's going to have not only national implications and all of that, but there's also a lot of local things on the election. So um, when you go, and this is, sorry, I'm talking politics, but when you go, if these local parks and things are important to you, make sure that you're taking the time to vote for the local stuff as well, not just the national things. So that's my, that's my political, uh, political rant today. Very much. Dig it. <laughs> you want to talk about something else controversial? I'd love to. So uh, this affects the real estate industry. Um, as everybody knows, we're in a pandemic, but suddenly real estate is rocking and rolling. Uh, new home construction has really spiked. It's a lot easier to go into an empty, brand new, completed home and get it sold. I mean, they are not sitting around. Um, I was in an appointment yesterday where um, I learned that lumber has gone up 66%. And um, a contract I was working on for a client out of the blue jumped 40 grand. 40 grand. I mean, like, ugh, they just took the baseball bat and like into the kneecaps with that yeah. one. Um, I don't know if we can salvage this, but uh, what I'm driving at is if you waited, you probably missed the boat on that one. Prices are up in the new construction realm. So sorry, it sucks. I hope they go back down, but I don't know when that's going to happen. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go realtor on you a little bit. So the new home sales spiked almost 25% uh, in July. So that is huge. Like you're mm -hmm. saying, most of that is new home. So what I was told by a couple of uh, custom home builders is the reason that materials are going up so much is they're having a huge issue battling coronavirus at the uh, at the mills where they're actually milling the lumber it's hard for them to stay open and with everybody trying to do new construction and the mills not having any material to sell well the prices go up um yeah that's definitely and and shelly's asking wait until 2021 you would have to hope that if we can get coronavirus under control, that prices will drop supply and demand, hopefully. I, I would like to say that, uh, but at the same time, I, I don't know. Well, the realtors and us are going to say, no, don't wait. Now's the perfect time. <laughs> we will sell your house for top dollar and we will save you tons of money. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that's no, that's not the that's not the issue. So selling the houses right now is not the issue. No, you just have to all. have a plan on what you're doing next. Uh, yes, yes. Um, my good friend and mentor Gary Keller tells me the market you sell in is the market you buy in. So right. something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, things are still moving and grooving. We just have to kind of adjust to that sticker shock that just came this way. Um, and I was even told like our retailers like Home Depot, because of the spike in the DIY stuff, um, they're even struggling with materials as well. And I'm just like, wow, this is this is fascinating. It really is. And watching it play out is, is interesting. And I was at Home Depot yesterday trying to buy landscape fabric. We're doing some patio work and stuff. And there there is zero landscape fabric. They, they've got a huge bin that's it's usually piled 15 deep in it and there's zero landscape fabric at, at home depot so it, you know a, a small suggestion of what's actually going on that's that's right i i would hope you you said that y'all are taking or they're taking a forty thousand dollar price increase was it a large national builder or was it a smaller local one large national builder um been in business either 74 or 94 years um, I'll have to go look that up. It was wow. not an easy conversation. I don't know if we're going to continue or seek other alternatives, um, but we'll see how that plays out. I mean, Chris, you know, as well as I do, like every transaction has its little spin and quirks, right? So that's what's going on here and we'll work through it and figure out what's best for them. Um, but I don't know, 40 grand is the juice worth squeeze. I'm not sure. And in Dripping Springs, that's a minimum. Well, 
I should say that's probably around 10% price bump. That's, that's big. That's yeah, big. And, <laughs> it oh is. Oh my gosh. Um, I, I was hoping, I was hoping you were going to say it was a local or a smaller builder and they just weren't able to absorb the, the impact. You know, I was hoping a, a larger national builder would be big enough and have their prices negotiated out far enough that the impact wouldn't hit them. But well, so much for that. Yeah, that's all right. I'm just here to bring the bad news today, just I think. the bad news. <laughs> that's right. Uh, and we just kind of bringing everybody up. We're 25 minutes. We got about five minutes. But letting you know, uh, Shelly's not the only one who can who can comment on here. Uh, anybody can comment. If you've got questions, specific questions about Dripping Springs or anything else, uh, please post them. Um, we don't want to just sit here and talk at each other the whole time. If you've got questions, things you want to know, make sure you ask. And I'm trying, there was something else very important that I was going to talk about that happened this weekend, but I don't know what it was now. Hmm. I took my own advice. My wife and I ate uh, breakfast Saturday at Rolling in Time and Dough, and of course it was amazing. Yes, wonderful. Gotta love the bre breakfast croissant, which, oh. and, she, and she got one of the mini, um, the mini cinnamon rolls. We'd always gotten the big ones. She thinks she said she likes the mini ones better. I think it's just a higher um, ratio of the frosting to the roll. So. <laughs> She's a wise woman. <laughs> she, she, She's a very wise woman. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, anything else on your head? Man, I'm, nope, I'm just momming through right now. So, you know, I can maybe come out from my, my bunker next week. Of course, I've, I've been around town um, doing my day-to-day -day stuff, but my focus has just been keep this nine-year-old boy on task. How do they do it? I don't get it. I don't know. Again, different, different world with <laughs> the younger ones. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Older ones are going to be bad enough, but the younger ones, the 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 mind is just different. Oh, absolutely. You, as a the older that I mean, I never I, I can still barely focus on anything. But when I was a kid, holy cow! I mean, <laughs> you know, I, so very very difficult. I think my only saving grace on this one is I'm I'm not the only one. You know, there's there's safety in numbers. <laughs> ah, that's right. There are safety in numbers. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, Shelly, that's had a uh, Denise. Are you still on here? Because Twelve Fox had a Sunday uh, gospel brunch. I think this was the first one Denise said, and I'd seen the some of the postings about it, but we didn't get a chance to make it out. Um, if anybody was there or uh, or caught it, I think they did a live also. Maybe uh, let us know because that's that's really cool. I'd I'd love to have a little gospel brunch to go to every now and then. Denise, are you still there? <laughs> Mom? Mom? Yeah, <laughs> Mom? <laughs> You're so in trouble. Me? You're so in trouble. <laughs> I hope she still likes me after this. <laughs> she will. The good thing is, is you, you can run away. She won't be able to catch you with her. But still, you're good. Uh, gospel brunch sounds amazing. Yeah, um, my church has been online. Um, well, we met in person for like three weeks and then like the re shutdown kind of happened um, and our uh, church went back to virtual. So we reopen again, Labor Day weekend. I think Sunday, September 6th is the first time we'll be open and together. The YMCA services are at 10 a.m. If you're looking for a church home, I invite you to come check out my church home. I've been there for a little over a year now in uh, uh, it's made a, that foundation church has made a huge impact in my family. So if you're looking for a church home, I'd love to, to welcome you anytime. If you're looking to go to gospel brunch, I love brunch and I love the gospel. Right. So I feel like this is for me. That's right. Uh, and Denise <laughs> said, uh, Stacy, if y'all don't know, Stacy's uh, one of the owners out at 12 Fox, Stacy and her husband, Joe Hogue, and then um, Aaron Llewellyn and his wife, they are the, the co-owners out there. So Evidently, if Stacy said they're looking to do it again, it is probably going to do it again uh, because Joe listens to his wife like a good man. So <laughs> I, I hope he's watching. <laughs> I hope he's watching. But all right. Well, we're coming up on 30 minutes again. So and I'm a little bit out. I, I just wasn't around this weekend as much. Um, oh, Denise is saying something else. 
Um, oh, she can move quickly on a scooter. She will track you down. <laughs> um, I will be out a little bit more this week, and we'll have some some more interesting stuff. I'm actually shooting video with uh, with Weathered Hands on their uh, coffee. I think I think they're going to do some roasting for me on Thursday, and I'm going to be able to get some pretty cool videos. So I'll actually be out checking out the community this week. I'm sorry I fell down, fell down on the job last week. So, oh well. I don't think anybody's going to call you out on it. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. But, all right. So, Ashley, um, thank you again. As always, guys, we do this every uh, every Monday at 2 o'clock. And we're going to keep doing it as long as people are watching. I mean, we got up to about, I think it was 12 or 13 viewers at one time. I know this is kind of long, but people can kind of pop in and pop out. And remember, if you've got questions about real estate or Dripping Springs or any of the, uh, the restaurants or, or breweries or any small businesses in the area, feel everybody reaches out on Dripping Springs Neighbors. That's great if you don't want to reach out because sometimes, uh, you know, people are a little, we can call it sarcastic. Um, if you want to reach out to Ashley or I directly, you can DM us on Facebook and um, or you can, I mean, heck, my number is 512-736-1703, Ashley. 512-716-9193. Should we uh, text? Yeah, shoot us a text. That's our cell numbers. That's how you can get a hold of us. Just try not to text us at midnight. That would be and cool. and quickly going back to our offer last week um, for our families out there adjusting to virtual learning. If you are in need of school supplies for your kiddo, um, Chris and I are happy to shoulder that cost. No questions asked. We are here to help use this as a resource. We have other resources in the community we can reach out to as well. We do not want our community struggling. So if we can help in some way, let us, we'd be glad to. Absolutely. And it was pretty amazing. What, about two minutes after um, last week's broadcast, somebody messaged you and said, if we need help fulfilling anything to contact them. Yeah. So yeah, people in this community are just huge givers and it's it's pretty amazing to be a part of. So. Absolutely. All right, guys. Until next week, have an awesome week. If you see us around town, wave, say hi. Just don't throw rocks. That hurts. <laughs> All right. We'll see y'all later. Bye, y'all.